now. Uh, we've got David Tamahiri. It's David. Oh, sorry, David. Come on up. So the, the floor is really yours to spend some time talking about it and, and maybe some questions later. Cheers. Um, kia ora e te whanau. Um, ka hari te nākau mo koutou kua tāna mai ki kōnei i tēnei ahi ahi. Um, ka tika, um, ka huri nā kūpa kōrero, ki a koe e ko, ko, ki a koe e tā mā, mō tō um, whai kōrero o pōwhiri, ki a mātou, mō tō, uh, mō tō tātou karakia, uh, whakatū whera i, I tēnei āhi, tēnā koe. Um, you may be wondering why a lot of you might be wondering why, what the hell I'm doing up here. Um, when our tapita met, mentioned uh, broken s stitches, well, I'm one of them. I'm also a um, subject of this um, wrongful convictions. In 1990, I got convicted for killing two Swedish tourists. Um, although it was a five-week trial, was about seven witnesses that counted for anything. It was two um, uh, trampers who said they saw me and a blonde woman up in the bush north of Thames. Um, a psychologist from Victoria University. Three secret witnesses. And a guy who said I gave the Swedes watch to my son. So, um, then in about a year or so after I got convicted, they found the Swede's body and he was nowhere near where he was supposed to be. In fact, it was um, 34 kilometres in a straight line from a place called Cosby Settlement to south of Fongamata. And um, there was a mountain range, you know, the Coromandel Ranges in between. And if you went by road, you had to go 12 kilometres down a bush track and 73 kilometres by road to get to where the guy was and then hump him three kilometres back up into the bush. So, one, and one of my advantages, I had these, these three track witnesses who said I confessed all to him. Luckily for me, because the only thing their, their story only varied in one aspect was how I'd actually killed them and where I had them or how I disposed of the bodies. And luckily for me, when they found this guy, none of, that, none of it had happened. Did it? And to top it all off, I had a guy, the guy who said I'd give my watch to my son, the Swede was still wearing it. And the importance about that watch is there was, there was no evidence, um, forensic or otherwise, except the only evidence they had that connected me with the Swedes was the watch because there's only one place you're going to get a watch from. And that would have been, obviously, the Swede. So we had the, went through the appeal process and the time to go take a hike. And so now it's coming up to nearly 30 years I've been arguing. Well, I, I did 20 years in jail over it as well. But um, these secret witnesses I have a real dirty on them, I use them. <laughs> but the thing is, because there's no, um, no defence. You know, the guy stands up and says, he told me this, he told me that. And all you can do is say, no, I didn't. And then the evidence that these gave, guys gave at the trial, because it was five weeks of a trial, but it was really boring. You know, and... Um, when they arrived, that certainly changed. And it was that graphic and nasty, their stories was that um, one of the jury members got physically sick during the trial. So we stopped the trial for a couple of hours and they said to them, you know, like, we can take the rest of the day off if you like. And well, this jury member said, no, we'll carry on. But I knew then, once that evidence had been given, it didn't give a damn what we said after that, it was all over. And which is the 
how it worked out actually. But it was still a reasonably near run thing because at the time of my um, trial, no other jury had sat out for as long as mine had. And at one stage they asked the judge to call it quits. Yeah. And he refused. He said it's not fair to the next jury and you know, so you've got an obligation to come to some sort of decision. And then following this guy's um when they found the Swede's body, because I never ever found the woman yet, which is to me it was quite surprising, but anyway, we went off and said, okay, this is what's wrong. Because in one stage, you, the first time in Commonwealth law, a psychologist was used as an identification witness. And they had two trampers who said they saw me and a blonde woman, but they never ever said the blonde woman was a Swedish girl. So what the Crown did was they gave the three cigarette witness statements to this guy and the two tramper statements. And from that, he determined that the blonde woman was a Swedish girl. And even the um, trial judge at the time said, this professor's evidence is an identification, one of the identification. Plus, he, now he based, the, we used the argument, well, they talked to this guy for a quarter of an hour. And we said, well, surely somewhere in that conversation, that woman who was with him was going to say something or do something to indicate she was in deep strife. Because by this time, I'd already raped the guy and killed him, according to the secret witnesses, and threatened to do the same to her. So, And we said, well, surely they would have said something or done something. Now, this psychologist reckoned she, she was... Um, in a state of frozen fear or fright. And he got, came about from that, it was a mixture of um, the Stockholm Syndrome and post-traumatic stress. And he said he had published papers in, it in the United States. Well, it wasn't until after trial that we could, um, we got around to investigating it. And he never had, he was a little more than a charlatan. So when we went to the appeal court with it and said, look, and this son of a bitch who went and, you know, he was full of it, they just turned around and said, no, no, you got it all wrong. He wasn't appearing as an expert witness. He was there as a layman and he was merely answering a hypothetical question put to him by the Crown. And it's instances like that that I've been arguing now for, you know, I said nearly 30 years. And there are times when you think... You know, what the hell? But then I met people from um, this one here, Innocence for All, um, and others throughout the country, and you find out that I'm not the only one in the same boat. There's quite a few of us. In fact, there's far more than a country our size, you know, should have. And the thing, I, the reason I'm here today is because I like the co-papa, and if there's something I can do to help, you know, someone else along the way, we'll do it. But um, not either kahuri no ki tēnā whare, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou koutou.